thank you and good evening everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our city council meeting of June 27, 2023. In the interest of government transparency with regards to deliberations and decisions made by the city council and according to open meeting law, since this meeting was posted as a Zoom meeting, this meeting is recorded by video and audio and will be conducted by remote participation. Additionally, all votes taken by the city council during this and future remote meetings will be by roll call vote. If you're calling in on a phone, you can press star nine to request to speak. If you're watching on a computer or device, there is a raised hand button that you can tap or request to speak. Please use either of these options during oral communication to be recognized to speak. Um, if you are not speaking right now, if you put yourself on mute, that would be great. Um, we have, it is the finding of the city of Gloucester that no individual shall be denied equal treatment or opportunity because of their age, ancestry, color, disability, including intellectual and developmental mental disability, family status, immigration status, gender identity or expression, military status, marital status, national origin, race, religion, sex, or sexual orientation. I'd like to begin by introducing the members of the city council that are on the call. If you'd raise your hand when I call you, first of all, uh, Jeff Wordley at large, uh, Jason Grow at large, Tony Gross at large, Frank Margiota, um, Ward 3, Sean Nolan, Ward 5, and City Council um, Vice President. And I don't see anybody else. Hold on. Tracy's on. Where's, where did Tracy go? She was here a second ago. She has a I was here the whole screen. time. I'm just doing stuff that you don't want to see. Okay, so Tracy O'Neill is here and she is our Ward 2 City Council. Scott Mamart is here, he is Ward um, 1. And I think that's all the councillors except for Council O'Hara that, that are here right now. And I'm Val Gilman, I'm Ward 4 City Council and I'm the Council President. So I'd like to introduce members of city, city staff that are here right now. Um, Gary Johnstone, who is um, our Assistant Auditor. Um, I'm sorry, Assistant Assessor. Correct, Gary? Yes, okay, good. Um, Sal Stefano, who is the Director of Economic Development. Um, mayor Greg Berger, who is our mayor, of course. And um, I think everyone else is going to be involved with different parts of the applications that are being considered right now. And of course, tonight we have Grace Poirier, who is our Assistant City Clerk, and tonight she is serving as a uh, as our City Clerk because Joanne is on a much deserved vacation. Um, let me just take a look to see if there are any members of other members of city staff that are that are on the call that I have not introduced. Kenny Coster is our auditor, and he's on the call. As is um, Chief Ed Conley, who is our Police Chief. Um, Chief, your team worked really hard this weekend. Thank you, and. Um, I think that is all I see for city staff. And we have 16 attendees right now that are on the call. So um, having said all this, uh, first order of business, Madam Clerk. Oral communications. The public shall have the opportunity at every regularly scheduled meeting to be heard under oral communications on matters not appearing on the agenda. Oral communications shall allow any resident who has a request or complaint of any nature relative to city business to appear before the council, state their problem without debate, and the matter shall be referred to the proper agency through the office of the mayor. The resident will be notified within a two week period relative to the disposition of same, and a copy shall be forwarded to the city council. Persons speaking under oral communications shall be limited to three minutes each. And the per first person that's doing roll call tonight is um, Tony Gross, and he has um, graciously offered to be the, um, the timer. So at two minutes and 50 seconds, he will um, send out a notice, and then I will ask you to wrap up. Um, so if you're interested in speaking to our council and public Comments, would you raise your hand so um, our city clerk can bring you into the meeting? I 
I just pulled in Larry Russo, senior. Okay, okay. can you hear me? We can, Larry. Would you introduce yourself and um, your address? And you have just um, up to three minutes to speak to us for anything that's not on our agenda tonight. Welcome. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Larry Russo, and I reside at 56 Ye Old County Road on Rust Island. What I am asking is the city upgrade the city owned water seasonal system on Rust Island to year round distribution for the assurance of fire protection. The 50 plus residents of Rust Island have a significant and valid fear of fire. Over the past 50 to 60 years, the island topography has changed dramatically from scattered low lying brush to a tall, dense forest with an underlying thick growth of scattered dead trees. It will only take one dry season and a small fire source to create wildfire conditions that could cause a conflagration and the devastation of our island homes. Currently, this city is ill-equipped to deal with such an event. There are no fire hydrants on Rust Island, as you know, and trucking in water is not feasible. History has documented that we have raised our concerns several times over the years. In 2008, per the minutes of the February 12 City Council meeting, during discussion of a water sewer project, Councilor Toby requested the mayor provide an updated list of streets in need of replacement of water lines. Chief McKay replied, quote, there are areas in great need, such as Crafts Road and Rust Island, end quote. In 2012, at the January 30 meeting of the Ordinances and Administration Committee, Mr. Hale stated, quote, there are pockets in the city without any fire hydrants. Rust Island is one, as there is no deep water past Lobster Land Restaurant, end quote. Later in 2012, at the June 18 meeting of the Ordinances and Administration Committee, Councilor Verga stated, quote, they won't know costs until a master water plan is developed by the DPW director to alleviate water distribution problems in certain areas of the city, like Rust Island, that has nothing at all, end quote. Here is my ask today. Number one, have the DPW director create a master plan of city water projects and rank them by priority based on fire safety. Number two, appropriate the necessary funds for the DPW to conduct a deep water feasibility study to install necessary fire hydrants and deep water connections to the residences and businesses on Rust Island. Please send a response to me at L Russo. 20 seconds. L Russo 4812 at gmail.com. I also spoke at the June 6, 2020. Larry? Yes. Larry, excuse me, your, your time is up. Um, Thank you for so, your time this evening. Okay, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate it. Um, next person that has their hand raised. Um, Grace David Souza or? Do Hi, this is Dave Souza. Can you hear me okay? Loud and clear. Welcome, David. If you'd announce your um, address as well, that would be great. I'm Dave Souza. I live at 59 Wheeler Street. My wife and I have owned the home on Wheeler Street uh, for about 32 years now. And I'm here before the city council to bring up the long running problem of speeding along this street. I'm the person responsible for creating the petition requesting more traffic enforcement on Wheeler Street, bringing it door to door for signatures, over 60 of them, to sent to Councilor Gilman and the Gloucester Police Department community impact officers. This problem has been going on for many years, uh, may, maybe decades. I first brought it to the attention of the Gloucester Police Department six or seven years ago. According to city data logs taken from three separate years, during a one week period, an average of 17,454 cars per week travel up and down Wheeler Street. 66%, 66.5 are traveling at 30 miles an hour over the limit. I'm, I'm sorry, 30 miles per hour, that's 50% over the limit. And mind you that there is no uh, mall at the end of the street or town. 
A large percentage of the speeding is done by people who live near the end of Wheeler, near the point or along one of the side streets that connect to Wheeler. Um, it's the same people over and over that are doing the speeding, usually. A few will get a verbal warning from an officer that might last with them for a week before they're back to the same habit. Others know there's very little risk they will ever be pulled over and warned. Adding to the problem of this concern is uh, speeding is the absence of sidewalks along Wheeler Street. Once you get past Rona Road on the east side of the street and Apple Street on the west, people have to walk on the side of the road. There are no sidewalks, often with their families and pets in tow. There's also Brown's Playfield on the corner of Apple and Wheeler where kids play and have to cross the street uh, to get to homes and to the playfield. During the period when school is in session, this corner is also a school bus stop for elementary kids. So the 60%, um, and I should also say that in the history of Wheeler Street, uh, after a public records request, I found up until yesterday, there has never been a speeding ticket issued on this street. Yesterday, there were seven. Thank you very much to the Gloucester Police Department for that. For the 60 plus residents of Wheeler Street and the connecting streets that signed the petition need the help of the Gloucester Police Department to enforce the speed limits for their safety, as well as the pedestrians that walk in this area with their families. 15 seconds. That's it, I'm all done. Thank you. Thank you very much. I just pulled in CR. Hello? Hello, we can hear you. Oh, hi. Hi, this is Catherine Ryan at 17 High Rock. Thank you, counselors. I have been reviewing uh, different committee meetings from the past month. And, you know, in addition to the upcoming uh, vote on the city budget, proposed city budget, um, the ARPA, ARPA funding is almost listed on every agenda. The Community Preservation Committee and the CP fund applications was presented last week. Um, the up, up, upcoming comprehensive master plan, which is $300,000, you know, has been revealed June 1st and then presented to the planning board in the middle of the month. Um, I really wanna stress and request that members of all of these committees to disclose their affiliations and conflicts of interest. Um, I also want to say that five times I've written to the school committee since 2020, and I haven't heard back from oral comments or public hearing um, about the school budget. August 30th, 2020, April 13th and 27th, 2022, that was two years later, May 10th, 2023, and just recently to you with some of those concerned as recently as May 23rd, 2023. Um, I want a response. Um, also, all of these committees where I'm talking about conflicts of interest, all of these um, funding pools that are coming up are really stressing a quote unquote changing demographic. Um, and I really, <laughs> we're also hearing you mention the HRC mission statement at the top, it's so, so important. And are these, are these committees um, in place? Do they have the representation on these committees in place to be making these decisions? And does it warrant holding in several cases because they do not? Um, that's all I'll say for tonight. Thank you very much. I just pulled in Ann Strong. Hello. 
Hello, Anne. How are you doing? If you could introduce yourself and your name and address, that'd be wonderful. Terrific. Hi. Um, hello again. My name is Anne Strong. I live at 44 Crafts Road on Rust Island. And I want to say tonight that we really are grateful for the city's commitment to replacing city-owned seasonal water mains with year-round deep water throughout the city. Um, I've seen that mentioned in several of the mayor's replies to people who've spoken at open uh, at oral communications in previous meetings. With regard to Rust Island, there are 42 houses and three businesses that lack access currently to deep water mains and hydrants for fire protection. And as Mr. Russo mentioned in 2008, the fire chief informed the city council that Rust Island was in greater need of year round water than other areas of the city. Yet a number of these other areas have had their seasonal water replaced while we on Rust Island are still waiting. Also, many of us lack potable water because our wells have become brackish due to salt water infiltration. So tonight, I'd like to ask the city to make replacing the seasonal water mains on Rust Island a top priority. And I would also like to ask if the city could provide us with a list of roads that still have seasonal water. And that's all I have to say tonight. I thank you very much for your time and your attention. Thank, thank you, you, Anne. I'm, I'm back. back. Yes, thank you. I'm trying to help get Jamie in. Um, Grace, he's been texting me. Um, he's the number 7533. He's in as a I... panelist now. Okay, great. Thank you. Anyone else have their hand mm. raised to speak in public comments that has not yet spoken? Um, Nicole? Good evening. My name is Nicole Andrade. I live at 3 Haskell Court in East Gloucester. Um, and we all know about the ongoing issues with the so-called private water supplies all over town. We moved into this house in 2017 and didn't have too bad of a water pressure issue at this point. I can say that it has gotten worse every year that we've lived here uh, to the point where there are days where we can't flush a toilet, let alone run a dishwasher, wash dishes by hand even on some days. Um, it's my understanding that the line all the way up to, um, there's a chain link fence about halfway down the street. The line is public at least up to that point is my understanding anyway. Um, the other thing that is very concerning about the water here is that we have our water filters for our drinking water replaced now about every six months. I plan on sending an email with a photo of what the filters look like when they get removed. We had a well when we lived on Becker Circle, another area of town I know is having similar issues. And at that point, our well was going brackish. And also when our uh, well pump needed to be turned off for any reason, when the well pump got started back up again, mud would actually come out of our sink. And even in Becker Circle, I had to have those same water filters replaced every 12 to 15 months. And they did not look anything like the black water filters that we're pulling out of the system at Haskell Court currently. Uh, so I have real concerns about also what's going on with sediment. Every time the city flushes the water lines, we have to have the water filters done. There's no avoiding it. But my real concern is the appearance of the water filters. Uh, Billy Wister at Waterworks actually sent me a photo of one of the more recent filter changes just to show me how bad they were. Um, and I think the, the bigger point that I really thought about tonight was that in 2013, I sat in on several uh, P&D meetings um, for other reasons, but I happened to be there at the time that they were starting to bring up the fire hydrants and the water supplies on Rust Island. And at that point in time, I remember very clearly, I don't know if it was Mike Hale, but whoever was there representing the DPW said, that they didn't want to be on the hook for dealing with the water issues on Rust Island because there was already a work list that was seconds. two years long and no money to fix it. This is a pervasive problem. This is a pervasive problem that has been going on for many, many years. And it's time, I think, for the city to consider resolving this pervasive problem by 
taking over some of these roads as public and going after state money. We pay state taxes, we pay city taxes, we've asked for no abatements. And this is a very large, very long standing is up. public health issue. Thank you. Thank you. Next person, um, Grace, either Marianne Boucher or Kevin we'll O'Malley. Marianne Boucher. Hi, Marianne L. Boucher, 93 Mount Pleasant Avenue. Uh, I was taking a walk within my neighborhood this afternoon um, on Mount Pleasant Avenue. And as you all know, there's a, a lot of work going on with the utilities and a neighbor to, or an abutter to um, Swinson's Field um, came out to speak with me in regards to um, three dump trucks that are parked in Swinson's Field in the entrance. And they're quite concerned that if there is a fire in Swinson's Field, that the fire apparatus will not be able to get in there. Um, and um, they're also concerned, the neighbors, we were told last year that this uh, project was going to um, possibly be done by May. It doesn't look that way. Um, and while we respect all of the workers and they've been wonderful, um, everybody's wondering what the estimated time for this project to, to end. So if the neighbors could get some type of an answer as to what we're looking at for an end time for this project, it would be greatly appreciated. Thank you so much. Thank you, Marianne. And I just want to announce that John Dunn, our CFO is also on the call. Um, next person with their hand raised. Kevin O'Malley. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, Kevin. yes We. if you would introduce yourself and your address and you have three minutes to talk to the council. Good evening, my name is Kevin O'Malley. I live at 47 Crafts Road, Rust Island and certainly I've spoke a couple times prior to uh, my reason for calling tonight is just to voice my frustration that there's been approximately a dozen and a half people from Rust Island that have spoke over the course of the past meetings. And my feeling is that uh, while we receive uh, a letter uh, from the mayor within a couple of weeks, the letters are very general in nature. There's nothing concrete in answers. And that's what's causing this to keep running its space. And so I, what I would really ask is just that uh, some of these things, just such as Mr. Russo's uh, questions earlier this evening, that we start moving forward and getting some answers to those questions so that we can feel a sense of that, our voice is being heard. Uh, hopefully the mayor is hearing this. Uh, the, the budget is established, but there are still ways that things can be funded. And if in fact we can't get these question answers, I would request that some of the representatives from uh, Rust Island uh, as well as certainly welcome any city council meeting members to go and meet with the mayor so we can find out what we can do with this. And if it's an economic problem, then let's put that out there right on the table because the bottom line, we have to protect the people of Gloucester. In this case, I'm specifically talking about those on Rust Island, not only the uh, 50 plus families, but also the three businesses that exist, including the marina. Uh, and uh, certainly whatever we need to do Maybe our voice needs to go directly to the mayor and maybe we need to get some help from our state representatives, but he can guide us and we need him to guide us and we need everything to be open uh, and less general letters and more specific. So my request is for a meeting with the mayor uh, and I'd invite anybody on the council to join us. Thank you for your time. Have a good evening. Thank you, Kevin. Anyone else like to speak to the council and public comments for matters not on the agenda? Um, seeing none, next order business, Madam Clerk. That would be the consent agenda. Councilors, would anyone like to pull any matter off the consent agenda? I'd like to pull off number two under council orders. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, seeing none, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda with the exception of item two under council orders? So moved. Second. Um, moved by okay. um, Council Grow, and it was seconded by. Yes. Who? 
Jeff. Jeff. Jeff, um, Council Wordley, sorry. Um, or Scott. Um, so roll call vote. Council Gross? Yes. Council Grow? Yes. Council Majota? Yes. Council Memard? Yes. Council Nolan? Yes. Council O'Hara? Yes. Council O'Neill? Yes. Council Worthley? Yes. Council Gilman? Yes. Motion passes. Nine in favor, zero opposed. And now back to Council Gross for item number two on council orders. Yeah, I, I just pulled that off because uh, my order and, and Councilor O'Neill and O'Hara's orders are very similar. And I think that the best um, course of action would be to reconcile the two at ONA before it comes back to the council. Um, so that we don't have two, two separate orders going out for public hearing. And I think we can rec reconcile them at ONA, I think would be the best way to handle that. Okay, thank you. Um, so let's um, let's approve the um, of that matter to um, refer to ONA with the comment that Council Gross just mentioned. Um, is there a motion to approve that? So moved. Um, I think it was Council Gross, and is there a second? Second. Uh, Council Emard, thank you. Um, roll call vote. Council Gross. Yes. Council Grow. Yes. Council Majota. Yes. Council Memard. Yes. Council Nolan. Yes. Council O'Hara. Yes. Council O'Neill. Yes. Council Worthley. Yes. And Council Gilman. Yes. The yeses have it. Nine in favor, zero opposed. Next order of business, Madam Clerk. The June 22nd, 2023 Budget and Finance Standing Committee Report. And I would like to ask that our BNF Chair, Council Memnard, um, walks us through this and first describes the unanimous consent agenda calendar. Yes, thank you, Madam President. Um, uh, we've requested that we accept this as a uh, consent agenda. There are uh, six fairly regular and routine matters that are before us from budget and finance. Uh, the first was memorandum from the director of the DPW requesting our acceptance of a donation from Carol Steele Insurance for maintenance of the Langsford Street Cemetery. The second was from the fire chief regarding a routine transfer reimbursement to the police department to cover background investigations of a new fire department member. The third was the Chief Executive, Chief Administrative Officer's request to accept a um, $200 donation to um, from Associated Charities of, Mass, of Gloucester. And then the fourth, uh, we have a veterans uh, donations in the amount of $100 from Ed Camo. And the fifth, another uh, half dozen seven donations from veterans to the Veterans Affairs Office uh, from a variety of citizens and community uh, entities. And then the sixth, again, is more donations uh, to the Veterans Affairs, Veterans Services Director and Veterans Services Office, totaling $2,536. And we, these people will all be getting uh, thank you written notices and we're all uh, highlighted individually at our Budget and Finance Committee meeting. But I would ask that we accept those items as a consent agenda. Thank you. Councilors, would anyone like to remove any of these matters for further discussion? Um, seeing none, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda as noted? So moved. Second. Second. Council Worthley um, moved it and Council Gross seconded it. Um, roll call vote. Council Gross? Yes. Council Grow? Yep. Council Majota? Yes. Council Memard? Yes. Council Nolan? Yes. Council O'Hara? Yes. Council O'Neill? Yes. Council Worthley? Yes. Council Gilman? Yes. Yes, is have it. Nine in favor, zero opposed. Grace, is there any way that you could try to get Councilor O'Hara a, a, um, the, um, the, the proper yeah, I resent the link to him right before the meeting started. The link was resent to all panelists. I don't know if you can okay. check his email and try to log in that way. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah Councillor um, O'Hara, that, that worked for all of us. So Grace sent it maybe 15 minutes before the meeting as a reminder. So if you could try that out, we'd love to have your um, your photo on this um, on this uh, team of people. So that would be great. Um, so next order of business, Madam Clerk. The June 20th, 2023 Special Ordinances and Administration Standing Committee Report. Um, so I would like Council Nolan, if you, um, as chair of ONA, would you um, walk us through the motions? Thank you. <clears throat> All right, so on number one, uh, this is an order from Council Memard, uh, pursuant to Master in the Law, Chapter 54, uh, Section 24, move the Ward 1, Precinct 1 polling location from East Gloucester Elementary School, <clears throat> 8 Davis Street Extension, to the East Veterans Elementary School, 11 Webster Street, to become effective with a preliminary election on September 19th, 2023, and all further elections due to the permanent closing of the Ward 1, Precinct 1, Poland location at the East Gloucester Elementary School. Um, and I shall move, Grace. Second. Before, I was no, trying to jump in before you seconded. I didn't say anything. Um, Wait, I think that uh, wasn't all, all future elections, not further elections. All future. Get the motion. Okay, so we'll change that to future. Yes. Um, thank you, Grace. Second. Um, So what, would you like to hear? Was it moved and seconded? Um, the motion's moved by, was it by Council uh, Nolan and seconded by? Council Gross. It was seconded by uh, Gross. Uh, Gross. Uh, Gross. Uh, Gross. Okay, thank you, Council Nolan. Um, is would there you like a to hear the recommendation? Yes, in fact, why don't, this, this is what we need is a committee recommendation. So that would be great. Excellent. Go ahead. Thank you. <clears throat> On a motion by Councilor Nolan, seconded by Councilor Hara, the Ordinance Administration Committee voted by roll call three in favor, zero opposed to recommend pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 54, Section 24, and Section 8.6 that the City Charter to move Ward 1, Precinct 1, Poland location from East Gloucester Elementary School, 8 Davis Street Extension, to the East Veterans Elementary School, 11 Webster Street, to become effective with the preliminary election on September 19th, 2023, and at all further future. elections. No. Future. Sure. Future. We want to say future, okay. Future elections due to the permanent closing of Ward 1, Precinct 1, polling location at East Gloucester Elementary School. And there's a note. Uh, please note on the following motion, there is a Scrivener's error on the council order in regards to the address, the YMCA address. Okay. That's, the next, for the, next, that's, that's right. the next one. That's on the next order. Yeah, so we're, I think we're ready. So is someone going to move Council Nolan's um, motion? Don't move. <laughs> I think it was Council Memard um, moved it and Council Gross seconded it. Um, is there a narrative, Council Nolan? I think it's pretty routine. Um, we need to uh, find a new place to vote. Um, we have a beautiful school, and wow. if, I, if I could uh, reflect uh, to Council Memhard, this is his motion to bring this up. Great, uh, Council Memhard. Thank you all very much. Um, I'd like to particularly uh, credit uh, City Clerk Joanne Sinos for all her work that a uh, change of polling place requires. Uh, the interim one up to the YMCA and thanks to the YMCA for their courtesy and hosting us. Uh, and we're now moving forward and it, it's with obviously a note of sadness to say goodbye after 70 plus years to East Gloucester school site as a, uh, uh, not only a school and a community center, but also as our, our, lo our local election venue. But um, again, Joanne Senos has done a great deal of work and this and the next motion reflect our planning to uh, consolidate the uh, Ward 1, Precinct 1, and Ward 1, Precinct 1, and 2, and 2 um, polling places to the new combined elementary school on Webster Street. And uh, again, thank Joanne in particular. 
Thank you. Any further discussion, councilors, on the motion? Uh, Council Wardley. Just a quick question, if I may. So obviously, I'm, I'll be supporting this. Um, people are smart, and they can read, and they can learn, but people are also creatures of habit. And I know there's some people, especially um, in East Gloucester, in uh, Ward 1, who walk to the polling place on Election Day because it's a neighborhood school. Is there a way that we're going to communicate this to people in Ward 1? Obviously, this meeting is, you know, there's 20 people, 16 people in the meeting, but what's the way that we will communicate that? Is it? I know um, the answer, but I'll ask our um, city clerk, um, Grace, to um, describe that. Thank you. We are required by law to send a mailing to each household that has a registered voter in it in the affected ward or precinct. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> And, and I will also add from a person with experience on this, when we've gone back and forth from Lanesville Community Center to the, um, the Plum Cove School, is that the clerk's office does a great job um, with signage. So they, they put signage in front of the school where it's no longer held and as a reminder for people that might drive up there. Great. Any further discussion, counselors? Um, seeing none, a uh, roll call vote. Council Gross? Yes. Council Gro? Yes. Council Majota? Yes. Council Memard? Yes. Council Nolan? Yes. Council O'Hara? Yes. Council O'Neill? Yes. Council Worthley? Yes. Council Gilman, yes, the yes is have it. Nine in favor, zero opposed. Next order of business, Council Nolan. Uh, the next order of business, we have a, a, a note here. Uh, please note on the following motion, there is a Scrivener's error on the council order in regard to the address of YMC addresses. And the motion requires an amendment to insert after seven, the word Gloucester. So we just have to keep that in mind. Councillor Nolan? So, yes. I just wanna suggest that when you make the motion that um, when you state the committee recommendation that one of the other members of ONA just jumps in and makes a friendly amendment so that the matter before the council doesn't even have to be amended by the full council. Excellent. You can actually so offer, we have, you, you can uh, offer a friendly amendment now um, to insert that, and then once it's moved to the full council, they can vote it with the number okay. seven. I, I council would like Nolan, to add a friendly amendment. You have the honor. I would like to add a friendly amendment on the word uh, Gloucester after seven. Okay, so, so when you read it, just read it just like that. So go go ahead. Do you have the floor? <laughs> okay. So on a motion by Councilor Nolan, seconded by Councilor O'Hara, the Ordinance Administration Committee voted by roll call, three in favor, zero opposed, to recommend pursuant to MGL, Chapter 54, Section 24, and Section 8.6 of the City Charter to move the Ward 1, Precinct 2 polling location from the Glen T. McLeod Cape Ann YMCA 7 Crossing Road. Mm -hmm. And I don't need to say Gloucester. Well, you, you should. Do. Yeah. You have to say Gloucester, Gloucester now. Yeah, Gloucester to the East Veterans Elementary School, 11 Webster Street, to become effective with a preliminary election on September 19th, 2023, in all future elections to bring back Ward 1, Precinct 2, poll location back to Ward 1. And I so move. Second. Second. Um, motion was made by um, Councillor. Worthley and seconded Nolan. by Council no. O'Hara, I believe. Did I get that right? Um, Nolan O'Hara. Nolan. Nolan and O'Hara, thank you. Um, is there a discussion? Did we do this correctly, Grace? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, is there a discussion, Councilor, or, or a narrative for um, either Council Memard or um, Council Nolan? I think it's been stated already. Okay, thank you. Um, without further discussion, let's do a roll call vote. Council Gross? Yes. Council Gro? Yes. Council Majota? Yes. Memard? Yes. Nolan? Yes. O'Hara? 
Yes. O'Neill? Yes. Worthley? Yes. Gilman? <coughs> yes. Yes is have it. Nine in favor, zero opposed. Um, next order of business, Madam Clerk. The June 21st, 2023 Planning and Development Standing Committee Report. Councillor Grow, p and Chair. Alrighty, uh, just uh, I feel like I'm the special events coordinator here in Gloucester, but uh, we got we got a number of events that are coming up. Uh, we didn't have anything uh, other than our we have a public hearing, uh, and we have the uh, withdrawal in one one six East Main Street. But the uh, Anasquam Sea Fair is going to be on July 29th, Saturday, coming up. We have um, August on August fourth and fifth, the sixty fourth annual sidewalk bazaar, uh, which is both Friday and Saturday. I just want to point out that uh, the Gloucester Downtown Association has been working with local businesses to improve the event. Uh, it's shortened by a day in hopes that it would be a little bit more concentrated and a little bit more effective. Um, and then we have, uh, what else do we have here? Um, the street clear, we have the uh, community, Gloucester Community Safety Day, which is September 16th with the rain day of September 17th, 2023, where uh, the Gloucester Police Department and others, other uh, public safety organizations will um, show up all their all their great stuff to uh, folks. A very friendly, uh, family friendly event. And then uh, Magtoberfest 2023 on October 8th, 2023. So if you uh, find yourself in Magnolia on October 8th, you're going to want to head to Magtoberfest because it's awesome. That's it. Thank you. Next order of business, Madam Clerk. Public hearing 2023-025, SCP 2023-004, modification of SCP 2019-006, East Main Street, number 116, map 59, lot 53, GZO section 5.11, inclusionary housing requirements, subsection four, basic requirements, to, fit, to pay fee in lieu required affordable housing unit in the NB district. Okay, I'd like to open public hearing and um, ask for um, our committee chair, Council Grove to, uh, to speak on this. And before you do that, may I just say, Council O'Hara, can, is, there a re is there a technical reason why you cannot be on the call right now in terms of your of um, being able to be seen because we're gonna be doing seven public hearings right now. And we, our rules of procedure um, stress the importance of being visible. Is that something, can you just explain what your technology issue is right now? Uh, the Zoom link will not work. I actually dialed in, I can see you. So I, I can see everyone who's on the meeting, but the Zoom link will not connect. Okay. Can, can you try to go to a different location maybe by the time we get to the, um, the second one? Is that possible? I you don't have... think that I'm going to get any better Wi-Fi connection than, what, than where I am presently at right now. Okay. Um, so, um, Councilors, does anyone have an objection to allowing Councilor O'Hara to participate in the um, public hearings? No. Okay. Seeing none, um, so back to Council Grow as P and D Chair. Um, if you would um, describe what the next step is on this, oh, Council O'Neill. Point of order. Um, we discussed um, at the state level that. Per the Mass General Law, and I don't have the number in front of me, states that we do not have to be seen when remote participation is in is in um, is being used. So I don't understand why we would single out Councillor O'Hara and ask if anyone had an objection. I would, um, Councillor Nolan. Um, the, the law actually says that you don't have to be seen except when we're taking votes. Um, so if we go by the guidelines of COVID, um, you can be on the, the, the meeting by uh, voice, but at time of vote, you could be, you have to be visible 
um, by, vis by visual on video. If we go back to our old rules of procedures, if there's an issue where you're on vacation or away and can't make a meet-in, you can call in by phone. So it, it's, it's a mixed up dilemma, um, but it's not one that really bothers me, to be honest. Um, but the rule is by the state that your vote has to be um, visual and audio on okay. your vote. All right, I, I, I will so, look that up. I, Let, let's let's proceed, and um, okay. we can we can discuss this at our next meeting if we need to um, discuss this as part of governance. Um, so, um, so, Councilor Grow, you you have the floor. Yep. Thank you very much. Um, the short story of this is that the applicant has asked uh, to withdraw their application for modification of special council permit. As everybody knows, we've spent some months now working on. The application of the inclusionary housing ordinance as it applies to this particular permit uh, it's gone through uh, several back and forth with uh, continuances and I believe that at this point the uh, the applicant has decided that um, further moving further with uh, the process was probably not in their best interest and have asked to withdraw the application they've asked to withdraw it without prejudice which technically means that they can reapply for uh, a modification at a future date if it were to go to a vote for the full city council and uh, and fail they would be limited um, for two years to bring this this application forward again um, Frank, from a from a practical point of view um, I don't think it makes any difference there's no change in the, the situation and there's no change in the, the the facts of the of the matter so I don't see uh, we can ask Councillor Favaza he's on the call um, whether they intend to bring uh, uh, a new application forward, but my 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 guess is the answer is no. Um, but this would put effectively an end to the to, to this particular application, and that would require that the um, applicant put a in site on site affordable deed, deed restricted affordable unit as is indicated in the inclusionary housing ordinance. So that's where. Right. We Okay, um, um, the applicant's attorney, Joel Favaza, has his hand raised. Um, Joel, do you have anything to add to um, to this? Um, Thank you, Just for the record, Joel Favaza, Seaside Legal Solutions, 123 Main Street. Just to confirm what Councilor Groh is saying, this is um, a request to withdraw without prejudice, which is standard practice, but this is not to reset anything. There's no intention at this point to tuck and roll out of this and come right back next week with a new one. It was just standard procedure to not, you know, prejudice the applicant with additional restrictions they otherwise would not have just because they withdrew the application. So I'd appreciate the withdrawal without prejudice as requested. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. So um, did you make the motion, Council Grow? I don't no, think No, but you I'm did. happy to do that right now. If you would, that would be great. Uh, on, a, on a motion to Council Gilman, seconded by Council O'Neill. Planning and Development Committee voted three in favor, zero opposed to recommend City Council accept the withdrawal request for Special Council Permit 2023-2023-004, modification of Special Council Permit 2019-006, East Main Street, number 116, without prejudice, and I so move. Second. Motion made by Council Gross, seconded by Council Wordley. Um, is there a discussion, Councilors? No, again, the narrative, I mean, I'll let, I'll just stick to the narrative is that you know, we 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 took this uh, fairly aggressively through the process, and I think that uh, ultimately this is the right result for the uh, for the project, and it's the right result for the neighborhood. Um, I'm very glad to have heard the um, the appeal of neighbors and and people interested in, in uh, the inclusionary housing ordinance. Um, I think it's it's really important that we remember that it's the inclusionary housing ordinance, and that the whole point of that is to make sure that we have a an economic mix in our developments, that they don't become uh, cloistered uh, high-end developments with with no middle income or low income people in the neighborhood, and I think this uh, this helps uh, in general uh, towards that goal. Um, Council Member, I'd just like to follow up on Councilor Groh's comment and thank him and the Planning and Development Committee for their uh, work with this work on this, along with uh, City Solicitor uh, Suzanne Egan and all of the people in the community that. Uh, spoke out and expressed their concerns about uh, not going with a, a, a financial uh, deferment, but rather uh, 
placing the, the mixed use uh, affordable unit here in East Gloucester on East Main Street as part of this eight unit development. And uh, it's, I think it's very important. We, we held our ground on this. Uh, it, it, it's been back and forth in various ways, but I'm, I'm glad we've taken this step and I'm, I'm appreciative that the applicant is uh, working with the community. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Are there any further comments, Councillors? Um, seeing none, roll call vote. Council Gross? Yes. Council Grow? Yes. Council Majota? Yes. Council Memard? Yes. Council Nolan? Absolutely yes. Council O'Hara? Yes. Council O'Neill? Yes. Council Worthley? Yes. Council Gilman? Yes. The yeses have it. Nine in favor, zero opposed. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I opened the public hearing and now we've voted it. So um, I guess I should have closed the public hearing. So I'm gonna close it a little bit late. Public hearing is closed and that matter is no longer existing. So thank you. Next order of business, Madam Clerk. Public hearing 2023-032. Amend GCO Chapter 22, Traffic and Motor Vehicles, Article 6, Traffic Schedules, Section 22-270, Parking Prohibited at All Times, and Section 22-291, Towaway Zones, by adding Main Street Southerly Side, Police Parking Only, beginning 80 feet from the intersection of Main Street and Duncan Street, in an easterly direction for a distance of 120 feet to a cross from the intersection of Main Street and Elm Street. I'd like to open the public hearing and ask if a um, member of city staff would like to speak in support. And I see our police chief, Ed Conley here, our CFO, John Dunn, and I know Mayor Verga um, is around as well. So, um, Councillor um, Chief Conley, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. Good evening, Councillors. Um, Thank you for taking this uh, matter up. It's it's an important public safety issue. As everybody knows we are um, in the midst of a renovation project. And at some point in time, our access to our cruisers back on Rogers Street will be uh, very limited. In other words, they're gonna be, the construction company is gonna be required to take over control of both uh, the parking lot adjacent to the police station abutting Duncan and also the parking uh, space that we have just beneath uh, the station where, where currently our cruisers, our active cruisers are um, typically parked. So we've looked at a number of different um, possibilities, but the only sort of workable one that we've been able to come up to is to secure space in front of the police station, uh, some of which is, is currently designated as public parking. Uh, the reason for this, really the primary reason for this is that as officers come in here to do reports, and certainly as they come in here to change shifts during roll call, uh, we need to have the ability for those officers to access vehicles to respond to calls for service, uh, and those vehicles need to be quick, when they need to be quickly accessed. Uh, so that's the reason we're asking for this. Uh, we're only asking it for the term uh, of the renovation project for which the parking areas around and beneath the police station will be restricted. Thank you, Chief, appreciate it. Anyone else like to speak in favor? Um, seeing none, anyone like to speak in opposition? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, are there any correspondences or communications? No. Councilors, do you have any questions to ask? Councilor Grow and then Council Worthley. Um, thank you very much, Council President. Okay. I, I, have, I don't have an issue with... May I just state, um, we're going to be timing the questions to a minute each because of the amount of things tonight. So, um, and then if we need to recircle back, we will do that. So, um, um, Grace will um, be timing that. So, you have okay. the floor. Thank you. Um, a simple question. Uh, the Chief sort of addressed it already in, in his comments. Can we add a sunset clause to this so that Two year, two plus years from now, and we've all forgotten that we've put this ordinance in place. That uh, it 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 goes away with the construction because that's a fair amount of parking on Main Street. And I think if we just add a sunset clause that that 
in in the motion that that applies to sort of the end of the construction period, uh, it reverts back to public parking. I think would be a, a benefit, and I'm wondering if that's something we can do. Um, Councilor um, Chief Conley, do you are you able to respond to that? I could I could tell you, Madam President, that I have no opposition to that. That's I think that's uh, fair. Hopefully, we're able to sunset it before two years. But yeah, I think two years is Whatever fair. It takes. Yeah, it's it's obviously it's a it's a needed thing to do. So I just want to make sure we don't forget to to bring it back to the public domain. Okay, um, great. Uh, Thank you. So you can prepare an amendment to that, yeah. Councilor Bro. That that's great. Um, any um any further questions, Councilors, as far as the public hearing? Oh, Council Worthley, you um had your hands hand raised as well. Um. I was just going, must have done a mind belt with Councillor Groh because I was going to ask the same okay. question. So, okay, great. Thanks awesome. for asking me. Um, Council nice O'Neill, do you have any questions on this? That's what I was going to say as well. So thank okay. you, uh, right. Jason. Great. Um, so um, no more questions. I'm going to close the public hearing and ask for the committee report. All right, I'm going to do the committee report. And if you'd like, I can add the sunset clause to this or we can do the actual amendment, um, whatever is best for you guys. Um, I think we should do an amendment because so, we're recommending something out of subcommittee. So go ahead. Not, not a problem. So the ordinance administration um, on a motion by Council Majota, seconded by Council O'Hara, the ordinance administration committee voted by roll call, two in favor, one opposed, O'Hara, to recommend the city council amend the lost code of ordinances chapter 22 traffic and motor vehicles article 6 traffic schedules section 22270 parking prohibited at all times section 22-291 towway zones adding the following main street on a southerly side police parking only beginning 80 feet from the intersection of main street and duncan street in an easterly direction for a distance of 120 feet to across from the intersection of Main Street and Elm Street and I so move. Second. Second. Um, motion Come made by Council Bullen, seconded by Council Worthley. Um, so now would be the time for the amendment. Yeah. Council Grow on the amendment. <laughs> uh, Madam President, I'd like to amend this uh, to add in that this uh, this parking uh, chain that I'm I'm trying to figure out how to how to phrase it properly. Um, this park, parking restriction will terminate uh, at the conclusion of construction of the police and court uh, building uh, and revert back to public parking. At it, is there unless there's better language than that. Second. So, so did did you move? Can you just move it, Council Grow? Yeah, I just moved it. Okay, and uh, Council. Council Nolan seconded it. Um, is there discussion on the amendment, councilors? Seeing none, um, roll call vote. Yes, Jeff, 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 Jeff. Okay, I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, um, Council Worthy on I the just, amendment. Right. So before I discuss that, I did see, just as you were closing the hearing, I missed it. Um, uh, Traffic Commissioner Bob Ryan had his hand up. I don't know if you'd be willing to suspend the rules to allow for his commentary on this issue. I, I don't know what the traffic commission stands on this, but I did see his hand up. Um, I, I'd i like to continue on because of the amount of things that we have on the on the table tonight. So um, so is there um, is there a discussion on the amendment? Tracy's got her hand. Um, Council O'Neill. Thank you. Um, I'm in favor of the amendment. I'm just wondering, should we, do we know the number of spaces that they're taking away and which will subsequently be added back because some of the parking in front of the station is for people reporting crimes. I don't know if it's two or if it's three spaces. So for it to be reverted back to general public parking or should it be reverted back to persons reporting crimes for three? Is that too technical? We're actually over the question part of the public hearing right now, and we're at the amendment, which is the sunset right. clause. I'm talking about, I am talking about the amendment. Because the amendment okay. says, the amendment says that this will revert back to public parking, which right now it's 
parking for persons reporting crime. It's either two or three spaces. <clears throat> and then, then there's public parking. Do we want to put that two or three spaces for persons reporting crime or just forget about okay. that? Okay. Council Nolan, your hand is raised as chair of ONA. <clears throat> <clears throat> so by the amendment that Councilor Grow has made, this reverts everything back to prior to us doing that. So those spots for people re reporting crime would be the same spots. Okay. It would go back to at this moment. Right. Yeah. I heard that it would That's revert perfect. back. I'm sorry? That's good. That's a perfect. Okay, great. So um, any further discussion on the amendment? Um, seeing none, uh, up Council Gross. Has the amendment changed? No. Okay. So why are you smiling? Did 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 it did it sound like it changed? Um, it sounded like Councilor Nolan made a little slight change to what Councilor Gross said, but. I, I think he was probably clarifying what I intended, but um, I mean, I, it's fair that you'd ask that because my my amendment was a little clumsy, but uh, I would say that the intention is to revert it back to the existing uh, parking regulations um, following construction and uh, termination of construction. Okay, I'm, I'm clear on I'm clear on that. Is everyone clear on, on Council Grove's amendment, which was seconded? Um, so on the amendment, again, uh, Council O'Neill, your hand is raised. Thank you. Can you just read it again, Council Grow? Probably not. Um, move that we, we uh, let, let me, let me uh, let's think what we're trying to do here. Maybe Grace should read it. Um, that upon termination of, of construction, the, the parking will revert back to the existing parking regulations as of in existence today or in existence as of our just date. All right, thank you very much. Is that fair? Is that covered? Pretty clear on the amendment. Okay, thank you. Um, further discussion on the amendment? Um, seeing none, roll call vote on the amendment. Council Gross? Yes. Council Grow? Yes. Council Majota? Yes. Council Memard? Yes. Council Nolan? Yes. Council O'Hara? Yes. Council O'Neill? Yes. Council Wordley? Yes. Council Gilman? Yes, the yeses have it. Nine in favor, zero opposed. So now we are back to the main motion um, with the amendment added. Um, and um, um, I would ask if either um, Council Nolan or Council O'Neill, who was the order generator, has anything to say to start off the narrative. I Council. think it's yeah. thank you. I think it's pretty clear that you know we're just making it so that the police can park and do their okay. job more conveniently. Or yeah, it's pretty straightforward. So okay, thank you. Any further discussion, counselors? Um seeing none, roll call vote. Council Gross. Yes. Council Grow. Yes. Council Majota. Yes. Council Memard. Yes. Council Nolan. Yes. Council O'Hara. Yes. Council O'Neill. Yes. Council Worthley. Yes. Council Gilman. Yes. The yeses have it. Nine in favor, zero opposed. Thank you, Chief. Madam President, if I may just for a half second uh, thank uh, Bob Ryan and his work on the Traffic Commission putting this forward and Council O'Neill for sponsoring uh, Council Nolan for all his uh, assistance in this. I appreciate it. Thank you. And we appreciate the work of the Traffic Commission for sure. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Um, next order of business, Madam Clark. Public hearing 2023-026, RZ 2023-002, Madison Avenue, number 36, map 39, lot 41, from EB, extensive business, to R5, high density residential. I'd like to open the public hearing and ask if anyone would like to speak in favor. Um, I don't see if uh, Elizabeth or John Modello, if you are on the call, um, if you would raise your hand, you can 
begin if you'd like to speak on behalf of your request. Um, seeing none, anyone else like to speak in favor? Would anyone like to speak in opposition? Seeing none, um, are there any correspondences or communications, Madam Clerk? No. Any questions, counselors? Seeing none, uh, I'd like to close the public hearing and ask for the committee report from Council Grow. This, this is my kind of public hearing. Um, on a motion by Councilor Gross, seconded by Councilor Gilman, Planning and Development Committee voted three in favor, zero opposed, to recommend that the City Council amend the zoning map and zoning ordinance by rezoning RZ 2023-002, Madison Avenue, number 36, assessors map 39, lot 41, from EB extended business to R5, high density residential, and I so move. Second. Second. Right, Motion well, made by Council Grow, and I think it was Council Worthley who seconded it. Is there a discussion, counselors? You want to hear? Narrative, a, Council Grow. Yeah, I mean, this is this is a fairly straightforward um, thing. I think um, the Mondellos property they they own a house that they're renovating for their personal use that uh, happens to exist on an extensive business um, uh, piece of property that really should never have been extensive business, uh, probably ever. Uh, it does uh, back onto the bowling alley off Gloucester Avenue, but it itself is in a neighborhood. Um, it is uh, the buildable, the, uh, the current buildable uh, location is fully uh, habited by their residential property uh, and their, their shed. There's no reason that this should be extensive business and this will just put this back into an R5 and more appropriate zoning. So it's it's almost a fairly straightforward uh, uh, motion. It should have been done years ago, I'm sure. Thank you. Any further discussion, counselors, on this? Seeing none, roll call vote. Council Gross? Yes. Council Grow? Yes. Council Majota? Yes. Council Mimard? Yes. Council Nolan? Yes. Council O'Hara? Yes. Council O'Neill? Oh, yes. Council Worthley? Yes. Council Gilman? Yes. The yeses have it. Nine in favor, zero opposed. Next order of business, Madam Clark. Public hearing 2023-033, tax increment financing agreement between the City of Gloucester and the CUT LLC. Thank you. And before I open the public hearing, I would just like to note um, that only the TIF agreement is what is before the City Council tonight. This public hearing is not about permitting the venue or the zoning or the parking for the venue, and the public should be made aware of this in advance of the public hearing beginning. Um, so um, I'd like I, I would like to um, call um, upon Council Grow, who has a disclosure to note, and then I will open the public hearing. Okay, thank you very much. Just out of a, an absolute abundance of caution, I filed a, uh, a form 23B3, uh, Disclosure of Appearance of Conflict of Interest. Um, I do not believe, and I, the advice of the attorneys at the State Ethics Commission uh, confirmed that I have no, uh, no uh, uh, conflict of interest, but I just wanted this on the record. Um, it's filed with the city clerk's office. If anybody wants to read it, it's uh, fairly straightforward. Mr. O'Grady is wondering what the heck I'm talking about, which is exactly why I have no conflict. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to open the public hearing and ask either um, Sal or uh, Sal De Stefano or um, Mayor Verga to um, to begin. And and also, if you would introduce all your panelists, that would be terrific. So whomever wants to take charge of um, explaining this um, TIF. Okay. Uh, I'll kick it off. So just to introduce, we have with us tonight, obviously, uh, the applicant, Tom O'Grady. We have Sal uh, Stefano from uh, Economic Development for the city, uh, Dave Fields with the city. Uh, we have Maria Stefano with the state. Uh, I'll get to that a little later. I don't know if there's anybody else on the panel. Uh, John Dunn's on here, if there are any questions, as well as um, Susan Egan. So uh, let me just kick it off. So thank you, Madam President and uh, members of the council. So as we just described a couple of weeks ago, 
weeks ago at BNF, uh, we have an applicant for a tax increment financing from Granite Cove Equities LLC, also known as Granite Cove Venue LLC, uh, doing business as The Cut Inc. And um, I hope that uh, all of you, uh, or most of you at least, had a chance to review the BNF presentation that gave a little background on what the, the uh, TIF is all about. So the cut will be a multi-purpose entertainment venue that will include a facility for live music, comedy, film, uh, a bar slash restaurant, as well as uh, private functions. And there's also a recording studio and rehearsal space for local musicians and students. The applicant is both the landlord and the operator of the business and is putting in over $10 million to invest in and renovate the former CVS at 177 Main Street. Approximately 40 full-time jobs were expected to be created as a result of the investment. Uh, we've had several uh, meetings with the applicant, and we've made the presentation, as I mentioned, to BNF uh, last week. So a local-only TIF is required for, of the applicant to qualify for additional state incentives, such as the abandoned building renovation deduction, which is administer administered by the Massachusetts Office of Business Development. And the TIF committee has preliminary offered a preliminarily offered a TIF of 25% off the estimated incremental tax increase for five years, starting in FY 2025. The estimated savings is around $9,700 off of the incremental tax that the city is not currently receiving. So we ask the councilors for your vote tonight to help support a local entrepreneur, Tom O'Grady, who's a Gloucester resident. He's investing in our downtown, creating jobs, and uh, fixing a blight on Main Street. We've all been looking at that empty storefront for a very long time. So as I said, members of my staff are here to help out as well as uh, Maria Stefano. She's the Northeast Regional Director of Mass Office of Business Development. So through the chair, I'd like to hand it over to Tom O'Grady to give a little background. Great, oh, great. thank you, Mayor, appreciate it. Tom, welcome. If you would um, introduce yourself and your address, that would be great. Thank you, and thank you, Mayor. Uh, my name is Tom O'Grady. I live at 966 Washington Street in the Bayview area of Gloucester. Um, so yes, I, I purchased this building, and um, it's uh, it's become quite a project. Uh, a, a lot of uh, updates were needed, new roof, new HVAC, new plumbing, new electric. So we're investing a lot in it. Um, there will be a new facade, which I think will be much more attractive than the old CVS facade with a kind of old-fashioned marquee up front. Um, but I, I'm in front of you all today to ask for your uh, approval of this TIF that the mayor's office has been so kind to help us with. It will certainly help us kind of see the vision all the way through. Um, as everyone knows, construction costs have escalated and supply chain is, is challenging. And, um, you know, to kind of bring the vision to the full level, I think with this assistance from the city as well as the state, um, we'll be able to make that all happen and sooner than later. Great, thank you so much, Tom. Anyone else like to speak in favor? Um, I see um, Barnaby Pentagas, if you would bring him in. Grace, Barnaby, you have up to three minutes to talk to our council um, about this um, TIF. I, I just uh, want to say I very much support this project. I think it's a great idea. And uh, I think the city should be making what concessions it can to um, help the project move forward. And for the record, my address is 61 Fernell Street. Thank you. Thank you, Barnaby. Anyone else like to speak in favor? Anyone like to speak in opposition? Seeing none, are there any correspondences or communications, Madam Clerk? No. Councilors, are there any questions? And um, we will each have one minute to, um, to speak the first round of questions and um, you'll be timed on your question. So who would like to begin the questioning? Um, no questions. So I am going to close the public hearing and ask for the committee report. Council Memard. Council Memard, you are on mute. That makes it very easy. <laughs> 
On a motion by myself, Councillor Memhart, seconded by Councillor Gross, Budget and Finance Com Committee voted three in favor, zero opposed. Recommend that the City Council approve a tax financing exemption between the City of Gloucester and Granite Cove Venue LLC DBA The Cut in accordance with the Massachusetts Economic and 59 of the Massachusetts General Laws to be located at 177 Main Street for a term of five years ending in fiscal year 2029. Uh, the specifics of the recommendation are that uh, the City Council would have accept the following. Number one, the adoption of a tax increment financing agreement between the City of Gloucester and Granite Cove Venue LLC DBA The Cut for properly located at 177 Main Street. Two, to approve the project applicant application and define that it meets the requirements of Mass General Law 23A, 3F, in that it provides a reasonable opportunity to create jobs here within the city of Gloucester as indicated in the TIF agreement. And three, to authorize the mayor to execute the TIF agreement and to submit the TIF agreement and the certified project application and all other necessary documents to the Economic Assistant Coordinating Council of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and to take any other such actions as necessary and appropriate to implement the provisions of these documents. And I so move. Second. Uh, motion made by Council Memard, seconded by Council Worthley. Is there a narrative, Council Memard? Uh, I would just like to uh, thank uh, Sal and Maria and David Fields and the mayor for their presentation with Mr. O'Grady uh, first several weeks ago about the TIF program in general to help uh, build our understanding of how this program acts as an incentive uh, to businesses investing in Gloucester. And then the specifics of what uh, Tom O'Grady is proposing here, which is uh, gonna be very exciting and very welcome. And he has a, a clear vision for the property. Um, and it sounds like he's got a great deal of support and he's uh, making a substantial investment personally. And I think that we all owe him our support to uh, ensure the success of the project, beginning with this vote. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Um, Councillor, does anyone like to speak um, on this uh, as far as the part of the discussion? Councillor Nolan. <clears throat> I would like to say that yes, I, I, I will support this TIF tonight. This is a, a, a great TIF as long as many others we've had before us. Um, but on this particular property and what we're looking at downtown, I want to thank the applicant um, for putting up a substantial amount of money of his own wealth to make our city better. And I couldn't be happier. So thank you. Thank you, Tom. And I'm proud that you're in Ward 4, too. So good for us. Um, anyone else like to speak? Council Worthley, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you. I'm not going to um, belabor it, but I just want to also thank the mayor and all the community development staff and assessor's office and treasurer's office, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you. But the real thanks goes to Tom. Um, I think what you're doing is you're obviously taking a risk. It's your own money. And um, Good luck. It's such an exciting project. There's another property right behind yours called I4C2. If somehow you get inspired by your success and want to continue to invest in Gloucester, um, I think it's a good bet. So thank you and good luck with this too. Anyone else like to speak on this? Uh, Council Grow. Um, I just want to say that, uh, you know, I think that watching the presentation at BNF and, and the discussion on TIFs, it's important for people to understand that. While the TIF is great for the developer and for the investor, uh, the community in terms of getting uh, benefit back in 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 uh, at both the local and state level, most importantly, the TIF has to work for the city. And I think in this situation, uh, the TIF does that. We're going to get exactly what has been stated before: terrific investment in a fairly sizable downtown property. We're going to get jobs. We're going to get uh, some revitalization, especially uh, you know in the in the evening times. So it's a great, great uh, opportunity for the city to be involved in this investment. And I think that is ultimately the, the most important driving force in our decision is that, is this good for the city? And I think in this case, it absolutely is. Anyone else like to speak on, on this? Council O'Neill. Yes, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. O'Grady. Um, Tom, this is my ward, ward two. So uh, thank you for uh, investing in downtown. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak on um, behalf of this? Council O'Hara, welcome. Thank you. 
Anyone else like to speak um, on behalf of this um, TIF? Council O'Hara. Well, there he is. Thank, thank you. I, I want to thank Tom O'Grady for stepping forward. This is very exciting for Main Street. We all know Main Street has struggled. This is going to help continue the to fuel excitement on Main Street. I wish Tom uh, the best of luck. Thank you again. Um, thank you, Councillor. And I would just like to add the benefit of 40 jobs, um, 40 full-time jobs for the city, which is awesome. That's a, certainly a component that means a lot to us here in Gloucester, and, um, and we appreciate that. So um, if there's no more further discussion from councillors, last time to raise your hand. Um, seeing none, roll call vote. Council Gross. Absolutely, yes. Council Grow. Yes. Council Majota. Yes. Council Memard. Yes. Council Nolan. Absolutely, yes. Council O'Hara. Yes. Council O'Neill. Yes. Council Worthley. Yes. Council Gilman. Yes, the yeses have it. Nine in favor, zero opposed. Thank you all. Thanks for your support. Good job, thanks. Madam President, I wanna thank the council. I also wanna point out Gary Johnstone who uh, put a lot of work into calculating the assessments and, and the assessor's office um, and uh, Suzanne Egan for um, all the help. It's a, been a real team effort. Thank you very much. Shout out to both uh, Gary and um, our general counsel, Suzanne Egan, so thank you. Hey, good night, everybody. Appreciate it. Um, next order of business, Madam Clerk. Public hearing 2023-034, amend GCO chapter 12, marshlands, article two, wetlands, by deleting section 12-27, floodplain area boundaries and base flood elevation data, and adding section 12-27, reserved. I'd like to open the public hearing and ask if anyone is on the call that would like to speak in favor. Um, seeing none, is anyone like here that would like to speak in opposition? <coughs> seeing none, are, are there any communications or correspondences, Madam Clerk? No. Councilors, no. Anyone have a question on this? Seeing none, I would like to close the public hearing and ask for the committee report. Council Grow. I don't believe Council Grow is going to no, read not that. Me, not me. Oh, I'm sorry, Council Nolan. My bad. <laughs> on a mo motion by Council. Go ahead. On a motion by Council Majota, seconded by Council O'Hara, the Ordinance Administration Committee voted by roll call three in favor, zero opposed, to recommend the City Council delete Gloucester Code of Ordinances, Chapter 12, Marshlands, Article 2, Wetlands, Section 12-27, Floodplain, Area, Boundaries, and Base Flood Elevation Data, and add GCO Chapter 12, Article 2, Wetlands, Section 12-27, and that would also be to be reserved. And I so move. Second. Second. The motion's made by Council Nolan, seconded by Council Worthley. Is uh, there a further narrative, Council Nolan? Um, this was more of a cleaning up some ordinances from other things that we had worked on before with different velocity zones and stuff. Um, it was fairly uh, cut and dry. Greg Catamatory gave us a little brief overview over it. And um, I really don't see any issue with this going forward. Okay, thank you. Further discussion, counselors, on the motion? Um, seeing none, a roll call vote. Council Gross? Yes. Council Grow? Yes. Council Majota? 
Yes. Councilman Memard. Yes. Council Nolan. Yes. Council O'Hara. Yes. Council O'Neill. Yes. Council Worthy. Yes. Council Gilman. Yes. The yeses have it. Nine in favor. Zero opposed. Thank you. Next order of business, Madam Clerk. Public hearing 2023-030, amend GCO chapter 22, traffic and motor vehicles, section 22-270.1, resident sticker parking only, by adding Apple Street, both sides, from the end of Browns Field slash playground to Corliss Landing from May 1st through September 15th, by adding Juniper Road, both sides from Honeysuckle Road across Apple Street and to its end where it intersects with Corliss Avenue from May 1st through September 15th by adding Blueberry Lane for its entire length starting May 1st through September 15th. I'd like to open the public hearing and ask if anybody on the call would like to speak in favor. Um, so we have Kay Blusser, B-L-U-S-E-R. Um, if you, uh, go ahead, Council Grow, you have, um, what is up? You are mute. You're muted, Council Grow. Yeah, most, most people prefer that. Um, we're going to have three separate public hearings on this, or is this going to be a combined public hearing? This is the combined public hearing, and then the motions are three separate motions coming out of uh, ONA. Perfect. Thank you. Yep. Okay, so um, Kay Blusser, a B L U S E R. If I pronounced your name wrong, please um, let me know, and um, if we could bring you in and introduce yourself in your address, and you have three minutes. And who will be, um, um, Madam Clerk, if you would time for us and let me know at two minutes and fifty seconds, that would be great. You have the floor. Thank you. I don't know if you were talking to me. It's Karen Bliss. Did you get that, Val? Oh, Karen, of course. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, this is the first time I've Zoomed, so I'm really not sure what I'm doing. I'm Karen Bliss, 9 Juniper Road. Um, I'm calling to be opposed to putting up signs for any of the streets in the neighborhood. Um, I think it will tend to encourage people just to park, come up, come here and park. We have a nice, quiet, peaceful area. Um, I think that um, I've never had problems with the overflow parking from Corliss Landing. I've been here for 21 years. So I don't think that, I think most of the people, the neighbors don't seem to be in favor of the signs at all from what I'm hearing. And okay, that's all I have to say. Hmm? Thank you. Um, anyone else like to speak in either favor or opposition? Um, Bill Helmuth has his hand raised. Um, Madam Clark, if you would bring Bill in. I did. Okay, thank you. Uh, Bill Helmuth, 7 Juniper. This is the third or fourth attempt to, uh, to uh, express my opposition to this whole thing. It's not gonna address the issues that I think are the main issues of traffic speed, sound, um, traffic noise and parking. I, I just don't believe it's gonna have any effect on any of those issues. It's just gonna create a whole different set of issues. So I'm opposed. Anyone, thank you, Bill. Anybody else like to speak in either fa in favor or in opposition? I see Bob Ryan's hand come on and goes off. I don't know if he's still trying to get on or not. Bob Ryan, if you would like to speak in favor or in opposition, this is your time to speak. Um, so um, if you are there, would you raise your hand if you wish to um, participate? This is, this is your opportunity. I don't know if something's wrong with his, um, I'm gonna pull him in, Councillor Gilman, and then if he doesn't wanna stay, we can take him out because I don't know if something's wrong with his. Well, can you hear me? We can, um, Bob, yes, if you would- if you could tell us your address, that would be great. Yes. Uh, well, good evening, Council President Gilman, City Councilors, Madam uh, Clerk Correa. My name is Bob Ryan, Three Blake Court here in Gloucester. Uh, I'm speaking uh, tonight in support of the resident sticker parking, all the orders before you uh, on Apple Street, Juniper Road, and Blueberry Lane. 
The proposed ordinance came about to improve the safety, quality of life in the neighborhood and mitigate traffic congestion and illegal parking. Historically, problems existed around the quarries in Lanesville, as you well know, Val, Fort Square and the beach areas around Gloucester, Good Harbor Beach, Wingersheek, Niles, and so forth. Uh, tonight, Corliss Landing is yet another area of the city and its surrounding streets that need attention and regulations. A petition has been pre pre uh, presented to us uh, and to you of over 25 residents asking the same. In closing, I am asking that you address the concerns of the residents around Corliss Landing by passing these orders before you. Historically, every place we have placed uh, resident sticker parking only, we have solved problems, be it the quarries, be it Good Harbor Beach, be it Niles Beach. We have addressed the issues and solved the issues. And I think with Corliss uh, Landing, the same thing, the quality of life of the people that live there, uh, it would not be an adverse effect on them. They still can have cookouts. They can have different people visit their homes. If there's a number of people, they notify the police department to let them know that they're holding a party and they will address it accordingly. Uh, it will not bring other Gloucester residents. Believe me, I live over in Blake Court in East Gloucester. There is no way I'm going to drive over there because there's residents stick a parking. That wouldn't happen. But again, I ask your support to help them out even on a temporary basis, if, if necessary. Thank you for listening. Thank you. And um, those uh, hands that are coming up for a second time, um, um, unfortunately, we can't honor your request. Um, so we're going to continue with whomever has not um, spoken. So um, I think um, Donna has her hand raised. If you would um, introduce yourself, Donna, and you have three minutes in, in your address and you have three minutes to talk to us about if you're in favor or in opposition. Hi there, I'm Donna Crocker. Um, and this is my third time too, because I went to the Traffic Commission meeting with Bill Helmuth. And I'm just gonna say there, I live at Seven Kirk Road, formerly of 10 Juniper Road, but my partner lives at 10 Juniper Road and we entertain here in the summer. I sent an email to that effect earlier today. We don't have an issue with parking over here. And I would like to say that there have only been people who have stuck out very long committee and council meetings that are against this. So regardless of whether or not there are 25 people on some piece of paper, they're not showing up to speak in favor of this. Only one person who doesn't live in the neighborhood is speaking up in favor of this. We don't have, a, this past weekend, very busy weekend in Gloucester, some boats were launching at the boat ramp. There, was, there were no overflow parking issues in the neighborhood on a very busy weekend in Gloucester, very warm weekend. And there was extra parking down at the boat ramp. This isn't going to solve the private roads or the noise issues at the boat ramp. We don't need parking uh, restrictions in the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. Anyone else like to speak in favor or in opposition? Favor or opposition? Last chance, favor or opposition? Seeing none, is there um, any correspondences or communications, Madam Clerk? Um, as the council saw, there was an informal petition in your council packet as back up to this public hearing. There were 46 signatures on that. We did receive two communications um, yesterday that were received too late to go into the record, but they were all forwarded to the city council today. Thank you. Um, any council questions? Seeing none, I'd like to close the public hearing and ask for the committee report. And we're gonna do this in, in three different um, motions as it was at ONA. So um, Council Nolan, the floor is yours. On a motion by Council Majota, seconded by Council O'Hara, the Ordinance Administration Committee voted by roll call. One in favor, two opposed, Majota and Nolan. Opposed to recommend the City Council amend ordered the Gloucester Code of Ordinance, Chapter 22, 
Traffic and Motor Vehicles, Section 22, 270.1, Residents to Parking Only by adding Apple Street, both sides from the end of Brownsfield Playground to the Corliss Landing from May 1st through September 15th, and I so move. Second. A motion's made by Councilor Nolan. I think I heard um, Councilor O'Hara make the second. Um, is there um, is there a committee report, Councilor Nolan? A narrative? Uh, a narrative. A narrative. Um, yeah. It's pretty cut and dry. We have a request from Councilor Worsley for resident only on this particular street. Um, there were some names given to through paper um, looking to have this done. Um, and the traffic commission had weighed in on all three of these motions. The other end of it is people that have reached out to us to talk about their opposition. So it, it's definitely pretty cut and dry. It, it's this couldn't really be anything more simpler than a yes or no on this type of situation. Thank you. Um, and um, Council well, Worthy, order. Order, so you have the, the floor. Thanks. I just heard another voice. Um, so first of all, thank you to the committee and to the council for entertaining this. Just for perspective, we're all very, very busy. I don't just dream up resident parking in a random neighborhood, right? This came to me as a request from a number of residents. I've shared some of the communications uh, with you. I've had phone calls, I've had emails. Uh, and so there's, uh, there are people who aren't coming to these meetings, but they've asked me, it's, you gotta take my word for it. I don't dream these things up. And I've sent those in. It was the traffic commission that asked me to get more input from the neighborhood. And it, in lieu of a ward meeting, um, I was asked to put a petition together from a member of the traffic commission. And I think the number is, Grace, I think you said 40, it was actually 39 because the first one is the title of it. Um, but um, people sign this and just for perspective, I didn't go and say, hey, sign my petition. I said, what's happening in the neighborhood? If this is gonna help, then can you would you be willing to support it? This will not get the street paved. This will not, change the traffic that goes down to the landing. This will not make more room at the landing. None of those things are gonna be solved by this. Um, but everywhere that we have done resident parking only, we've heard, I think Councilor Gilman, you said, was a godsend to people that live in the quarries, near the quarries, I'm sorry. And the idea is that if we're having a resident parking only, we're not going to add more traffic. We're saying people who don't live in the neighborhood won't be parking on the streets. And what that means is if you have a gathering between April 1st and, I'm sorry, May 1st and September 15th, you have the people that, are, that you know, are coming to the party, parking your driveway or your garage or whatever it might be. But the interesting statistic, more than anything else here, is that we have about 40 streets in the city that are listed as um, resident sticker parking only. In the last five years, not including beach zones, in the last five years, the city of Gloucester Police Department has issued eight tickets. I'm sorry, seven, six tickets, two more warnings, six tickets where there was a fee of $25. And why? Because people aren't calling any longer to complain about these issues. The, the signs, is in the, I'd imagine there'd be three signs here, maybe four signs, act as a deterrent. And if that seems to not work for some reason, we can undo this. But I cannot see a scenario where more people are parking on these streets because we gave them the same benefit that we gave people in West Gloucester near the Winger Sheik Beach, near Good Harbor Beach, in Lanesville. It's the same thing that we've done in every community, every part of the community that has people who are visiting from out, outside the city to not have them park on these streets. If it turns out the council says no, so be it. I thought I was doing what has been helpful in this area. I do not want to make things worse. I think this will be helpful. If not, we can change it as early as September 16th. Thank you. Thank you. Any further comments on this, councilors? 
Uh, Council Gross. You are muted, Councillor. Sorry, sorry about that. For the record, the Traffic Commission did not make a recommendation. They voted unanimously not to make a recommendation. I can read the minutes. Unfortunately, that meeting was not on Zoom. Um, the uh, the motion was made to not make any recommendation to the ordinance and, and administration committee nor to the city council until such time as official legal definitive answer is given on whether or not the city can regulate private roads. The motion was seconded and the motion was approved unanimously. So for the record, I just wanted to uh, make sure everybody knew what the traffic commission's position was. Um, there's another um, piece of, uh, of um, information that was given to us by uh, the legal department. And if I can pull it up, it sums up its entirety of its ruling with, in sum, based on the research I have conducted, I believe the city may permissibly require resident only parking on private ways if the resident so asked the city council in writing. Um, so as I've said all along, I'm, un I'm unsure and I don't want us to get into more trouble than we already than we could be already. It's a, it's only a matter of time before some lawyer gets their car towed away from one of these spots that then case law is is demonstrated. But I think that's pretty clear that we have to get this in writing from a majority of people. I, I looked at the abutters, 17 residences, 17 abutting properties on these roads, and that equaled 48%. So it didn't even break the 50% threshold and all the, um, the emails we got today and, and, and the last couple of days have not been very favorable in this. Um, and the knowledge that also that there's been that the landing, as Council Worthley pointed out, this does not change anything on the landing or pave the road, which I think is probably the biggest issue that, that is happening on Apple Street. And I think that we should endeavor to try to find some way to give relief there. Um, but I, I just can't. I think that there's way too many questions on these the, these parking restrictions on private roads, living on a private road telling me I'm responsible for my road and then telling me that rules can be made without my input is um, is counterintuitive to me, so. May I respond to that? Um, and I would like to um, allow people that have not spoken yet. Has anyone not spoken on this uh, motion that would like to speak? And please keep it at one minute. Um, thank you. So um, I would like to speak on this. So I'm, I'm not going to be supporting this. And um, I was very involved with the, the issues on the quarries. And um, the, the, the issues on the quarries are a little bit different than the issues at Corliss Landing. And, um, you know, what happens in the quarries is, is like a quarter of a mile deep in the woods. And it's really hard to predict what's going on there, particularly with uh, requirements of the police to have to have two different ATVs going in together at assigned time. So um, there, there's, a, there's a huge safety issue with that. And, um, you know, I, I think, you know, being the ward counselor, I have a lot of com conversations with a lot of the people that live there. Um, in the last three months, I've done quite a bit of door to door with flyers and we had a meeting with the uh, um, Harbor Master and the police chief recently, uh, Council Worthy was there in attendance. Um, and the majority of the people that speak to me um, speak about the general rules in the landing. Um, they needed an 18 um, hour maximum sign. We, we did that, we put that up. It's huge, just like what the requirements are for the state landing. Um, and um, we had a really meaningful conversation about enforcement. <clears throat> So um, I'm not gonna be supporting this because the constituents that have talked to me about this are not in favor, um, but I do appreciate the work that Council Worthley has done to um, try to think out of the box and come up with some solutions. And maybe at a later time, we could think of some other solutions like whatever. Um, 
maybe not not allowing trailers to park on those streets or something or you know if if in fact they're taking up too much space in the landing of the 14 spots that are there for the public non-residents or residents so um anyone else like to speak and council worthy if no one else is like to speak um you have a minute to um to wrap up <clears throat> Thank you. I just want to again thank you, Councillor Gilman. Um, I do love this neighborhood. I felt like I grew up there in some part where I've got some family there. I may or may have not. I may or may not have cost my brother his tooth on a seesaw because he's lighter than I am. But um, many years ago, um, so I wanted to talk about the issue Council Gross raised. Um, we got a legal opinion that the City Council can regulate private roads exactly the way we regulate public roads, right? That's why the traffic commission didn't make a decision because they didn't have that opinion yet, but we got it. The language says very specifically, we can regulate just as we have the authority. I know you're shaking your head, but let me finish please before you say, okay, when you spoke, I didn't shake my head, but um, nonetheless, and it does say that the neighbors need to in, you know, request this in writing. We don't have a process to do that, right? All the other council orders that were submitted for all the other private roads were not requests in writing. And sometimes people didn't speak in favor of these, sometimes they did. But I, what do I say to the 39 people who said, yes, here's my signature, here's my name, I support this. Uh, are we discounting that they know their neighborhood as well as people who are in opposition? Or uh, they certainly, both sides know this neighborhood better than I do. But I can't expect people who are elderly or dealing with young children to come to every city council meeting, every traffic commission meeting. That's not fair to them. And I think that we do have a obligation to represent the people who are here okay. at our meeting and the ones who aren't. And that's why I support this. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Any further discussion, mm -hmm. Councillors? Seeing none, um, so remember that this is the first of three committee reports and this particular one is on um, Apple Street, both sides from the end of Browns Field playground to Corliss Landing from May 1st through September 15th. Um, so roll call vote, Council Gross? No. Council Grow? No. Council Mirjota? No. Council Memard? Nope. Council Nolan? No. Council O'Hara? No. Council O'Neill? No. Council Worthley? Yes. Council Gilman? No. Um, the motion fails, one in favor, Worthley, and eight opposed. Um, next order of business, Council Nolan. Council Nolan, you are muted. Sorry about that. On a motion by Council Majota, seconded by Council O'Hara. The ordinance and administration uh, committee voted by roll call. Two in favor, zero opposed, one Majota. Um, present to recommend that the city council amend the Gloucester Code of Ordinances, Chapter 22, Traffic and Motor Vehicles, Section 22, 270-1, resident sticker parking only by adding Juniper Road, both sides from Honeysuckle across Apple and to its end, where it intersects with Corliss Avenue from May 1st through September 15th, and I so move. Second. Council Nolan made the motion, was seconded by Council O'Hara. Um, is there a narrative, Council Nolan? Uh, it's pretty much the same as we had said from the first one. Um, we have some petitions that came in through Council Worthley um, looking to do a resident stick of parking on this um, and um, we reviewed it and now it's up for full council vote and this is council Worthley's order. Okay, council Worthy, would you like to start the conversation and um, let's, um, let's do maybe um, two minutes in the discussion each, if that's okay, Grace, if you would mind timing that, that would be great. Would you like to speak on behalf of your order? Sure. I mean, I think the argument's the same as the last one, right? And, you know, I've got lots of communications and phone calls. People ask for this. That's why I submitted it. We obviously have some people against it, and I respect their opinions, too. Um, we have a petition with 39 residents signing it, and um, it is what it is. Uh, if it's anything like the last vote, I understand. 
um, just doing my best to be helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion, counselors? Um, I would just like to add, um, Juniper is um, the, the majority of the people that have spoke adamantly against this live on Juniper. Um, they see what's going on at the landing more than anybody because they have the bird's eye view right there. Um, you know, yesterday I drove by on our boat and um, and uh, it was on Sunday. I'm sorry, it wasn't yesterday at about four o'clock high tide, biggest boating day of the year. And there were only four or five cars in the landing itself and it can hold 14. So, um, you know, I, I think I have to listen to uh, my constituents and um, like more than half of Juniper have spoken out against this um, with letters to us and conversations. And they also, um, continuously attended the traffic commission meeting to also have an opportunity to speak there. Um, so I will not be supporting it, this, but again, I appreciate Council Wordley's um, trying to think out of the box to help some of the issues there. Um, any further discussion, counselors? Um, seeing none, uh, roll call vote. And this is on um, Juniper. I think you, everybody's clear on the, the motion that was made. So roll call vote, Councilor Gross? No. Councilor Gro? No. Councilor Majota? No. Councilor Memard? No. Councilor Nolan? No. Councilor O'Hara? No. Councilor O'Neill? No. Councilor Worthley? No. Councilor Gilman? No. On the motion field, zero in favor, nine opposed. Um, final order of business, Council Nolan. Well, it's the final order of business up on Wheel right. Street. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> on a motion by Council Majota, seconded by Council O'Hara, the Ordinance Administration Committee voted by roll call, two in favor, zero opposed, uh, one, one opposed, Majota, he went present, sorry. Uh, to recommend the City Council amend the Gloucester Code of Ordinances, Chapter 22, Traffic and Motor Vehicles, Section 22270.1, D.1, Resident Sticker Parking, only by adding Blueberry Lane for its entire length, starting at May 1st through September 15th, and I so move. Second. Second. Um, Council Nolan made the motion. It was seconded by Council O'Hara. Um, is there a narrative, Council Nolan? Uh, it's the exact same narrative that we've had before, and this is Councilor Worthley's order. Um, if you'd like to ask for his uh, report, that would be excellent. Sure. Council Worthley, anything to Thank add? You, Council Thank you, Councilor Nolan. It's the same issue, same concern, same neighborhood, so no need to belabor it any longer. Thank you. Okay. Council Gross on the motion. Yeah, I just want to acknowledge, um, you know, Council Worthley did do a lot of work on that and made me do a lot of work on private roads myself. Um, sorry for shaking my head. You did clarify in the end. <laughs> um, so That's we were at, at this, wound up at the same place. Right. Um, but uh, it does concern me. And that's that's the reason for my position. Thank you. Any further discussion, councillors? Um, Seeing none, roll call vote. Council Gross? No. Council Gro? No. Council Majota? No. Council Memard? No. Council Mem um, no. Uh, Council Nolan? No. Council O'Hara? No. Council O'Neill? No. Council Wordley? No. Council Gilman, no. The motion fails zero in favor, nine opposed. Thank you. Um, next order of business, Madam Clerk. Public hearing 2023-015, amend GCO chapter 21, streets, sidewalks, and other public places, section 21-1, prerequisite to acceptance of ways. Thank you, uh, Madam Clerk. Um, before we open the public hearing, I just want to be clear that this matter is regarding the criteria for accepting a private road to a public road, and that it is not regarding the improvement um, of repairs to private roads. It's the criteria. 
Um, so I just want to be clear about that. And when we discuss this, I'd like the public and the members of the council to stay consistent with what is in front of us. Um, so I haven't opened the public hearing yet. Um, Council Nolan, do you have a, um, but you, your hand is raised. So before I open the public hearing, would you like to state your, um, you are muted. Council Nolan. I would. After going back through seven and eight, um, we have two um, almost the same type public hearings coming up for the prerequisites for acceptance of private roads. Um, we have some banter that goes back and forth with the administration, and we have some questions um, regarding a few, if not all, of what's in front of us. I don't know what the process would actually be, but I would like to move that we take public hearing seven and eight and send it back to the committee for Councillor Gilman, myself, and Councillor um, Worthley to work this out so it, it, it's more fluid together as opposed to have two opposing um, public hearings on the same exact situation tonight. And that's just my opinion. I don't know how we do this, whether we, we ask them to go back one by one. Um, if we go for a, a vote for the full council, um, but I, I think it's going to be very confusing tonight mm -hmm. to try to decipher what's going to happen and how we're going to do this. Is that a motion? So, so um, I guess if you want to make a motion, um, we can I, vote. I would, like, I would like to motion that public hearing um, 2023-015 and public hearing 2023-031 be sent back to committee to work together and come up with something that we can do from committee that we can present as one motion as having two separate public hearings on the same motion. Second. And I so move. Second. Okay. Um, so the motion was made by Council Nolan and I think I heard Jay, um, Council Grove as the second. Is, is there a discussion, Councilors? Um, Council Worthley. Thank you. Uh, I would certainly vote in favor of continued dialogue if it goes to ONA. I would like to think that as a committee, as, as a whole here, we could potentially amend the first one to include the second one and have a vote on that. And then if that doesn't work or needs to be worked out more, then refer it to committee. But I think we're probably not as far off as you think. Um, just, uh, you know, as the discussion goes along, maybe there's an opportunity to uh, combine them through this process here. It, it's not going to change much whether we send it O and A or we do it here. It just could be done, I think, in this meeting here. So I don't know if we could be, if the council be okay with having the first hearing, and if I can make an amendment potentially to combine them and see how that goes. And then if it doesn't work, we haven't lost anything by sending it back to O and A. Um, so the motion's on the floor, but we haven't opened the public hearing yet. Right. So, um, but the, the, the public hearing has been continued, correct, Grace? Yes, it was continued from May 23rd. Okay. So I probably need to open the public hearing right now. Right. And then we, we need to talk about this in the confines of the public hearing. Correct, Madam Clark? Yeah. Yes. Okay. We just had, we had a lengthy dialogue before we even opened the public hearing. Um, Council Grow, you look like you're not in support of that from a well, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out how we're, we're we're dealing with two separate public hearings that were essentially being asked to return back to ONA, the substance of which. So if we open one public hearing, how do we then deal with the second? Do we just do the process again where we, we just open it and refer it back to committee for a uh, and continue the public hearing? Is that Grace? Is that the, the yes. okay? I think that's fine. They're just asking for clarification. Okay. Um, so is everybody clear on what we're, what we're doing right now? So I, I guess I should open the public hearing um, each one, uh, one individually, and then we will decide if we're going to support Council Grow's um, order to uh, return it back to, um, or was it Council? Council Who was it? 
Nolan. Council Nolan. Okay. Um, so um, I guess I'll open the public hearing. And um, Council Nolan, will you just um, reaffirm your uh, motion to uh, return it to uh, ONA and so we can vote it? I'd like to return public hearing 2023 015 um, back to ONA to work together for the next one to come back with a combined report that we could work on together. We have one vote for the same purpose as opposed to two public hearings. And I so move. Second. Second. Um, Council Nolan made the motion. It was seconded by Council Grove. Um, so any further discussion, Council? <laughs> motion. Council Worthley. Madam Chair, I, I might have missed something here, but I thought we just said we were going to hold that in abeyance and, and have the hearing. And then if we can combine them here, great. If not, we can send them to committee. I, I thought the public hearing happens before the referral, before yeah. the recommendation, right? We don't want to, we don't want to start the public hearing until we, um, the, the, the motion on the floor is to bring it back to come up with a unified version of this, these two unique um, orders on the same on the same order. So um, any so mine's just one sentence, right? And so we can do it at ONA if that's what the will of the council. That's what we do. Okay. Um, any further discussion on this, Council Grow? Um, I I fully support uh, Council Nolan's uh, idea of bringing this back to ONA. There's there's really no reason we should be trying to hash this out. Um, it's it's much much more efficient, I think, to, to get a final presentation on one set of prere prerequisites and not mm -hmm. to cobble them together. So I fully support both returning this one and the next one to Owen, back to ONA. Okay, great. Thank you. On the motion, Council Gross. Is there any clock ticking on um, a continuance of this uh, public hearing? No. Uh, Grace, do you want to speak to that? Um, no, there still? wouldn't be a, there's no time limit. To my understanding on this, there's no like it has to be advertised or the public hearing has to be held within so many days. It's not a zoning issue. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Any um any further comments on the motion um to return? Um go ahead, Council Gross. So just to be clear, if we did go into public hearing and, and go through the whole process, we'd have to re-advertise if it goes back out to ONA, would that be a problem? Um no, I guess just, it depends just, how, just, how much we would deviate from this. If it was a substantial uh, no, deviation, we'd probably have to re-advertise. But if we don't, um, if it's pretty similar, we can probably move it forward and not have to spend more money on um, advertisement. That would be my hope. All right. I, I just confused it more, so we'll leave that alone. <laughs> okay. Any further discussion? Um, seeing none. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, on my my comment, I shouldn't say seeing none because I haven't spoken on the motion. Um, I would have been comfortable trying to um, to to work together on the two tonight, um, but I think it's easier just to do it in um, because there's really no big hurry up on this. I I, I like Council Nolan's suggestion to bring it back to ONA, so I'll be supporting this. So thank you. Um, so roll call vote to return this to um, ONA. And this is for um, number seven. Um, Councilor Gro Gross, sorry. Uh, a yes vote is to return to ONA, right? That's correct. Yes. Councilor Gro. Yes. Council Majota. Yes. Council Memard. Yes. Council Nolan. Yes. Council O'Hara. Yes. Council O'Neill. Yes. Council Worthley? Yes. Council Gilman? Yes. The yeses have it. Nine in favor, zero opposed. So we are continuing this back to, um, to ONA. Um, and the public hearing remains open at this point. And we need to do the same to, um, to item number eight. And I will open the public hearing and ask for someone to make a motion to return it to ONA. Council Nolan? <laughs> I would like to take public here in 2023-031 and send it back to ONA um, to work out the previous matter and this one together. Um, and again, this will be with myself, Councillor Gilman, ONA, and Councillor Worthley to work on this um, 
as they are and we are the authors of it. So I'd like to bring this back so we can hash this out and get it figured out and bring it back to prime time for a great decision. And I still move. Second. Second. Motions made by Council Nolan. It was seconded by Council Worthy. Further discussion, Councilors? Seeing none, roll call vote. Council Gross? Yes. Council Grow? Yes. Council Majota? Yes. Council Memard? Yes. Council Nolan? Yes. Council O'Hara? Yes. Council O'Neill? Yes. Council Worthy? Yes. And Councilor Gilman, yes. The yeses have it. Nine in favor, zero opposed to return this to ONA. So that that public hearing remains open as well. So I'm not going to close it. Um, so thank you. Um, next order of business, Madam Clerk. Individual councillors discussion, including reports by appointed councillors to committees. There are three items. Item number one is Council President Gilman to review the third quarter city council meeting schedule including the return to Kairos Auditorium on September 12, 2023 for True Hybrid. Thank you. Um, counselors, I think you saw the document that Ryan Knowles had given us. It was um, in one of the packets. And, um, and what I'd like to do right now is, um, we don't really need to repeat what he said, but he basically, when he was updating us, um, his document was, um, he was. He felt that we were on track for um, getting back to a true, true hybrid and um, true hybrid at Kairos for the first uh, meeting in September. And when I talked to him um, recently about that, he actually felt that probably by the end of August, they're going to be pretty much ready. And um, he just wanted to make sure that we had done all the training and all the um, to make sure all the systems are um, working A-OK. -okay. And this would be to do both a full, um, to allow as many members of the public to attend as, as they wish, um, like the olden days, and also to have um, Zoom as a alternative to anyone that wants to continue their participation remotely. And we call that true hybrid and it's kind of the best of the best. And I think it's I think it's exciting and um, in my opinion, um, and um, it, it appears because of the setbacks and the fire that we can't get in the beginning of July like we had hoped. Um, so September 12th, actually that's actually my birthday. So um, just to let you know that that, um, that will be our first meeting back and I'll be excited to be there. Um, no one has to bring me cakes or anything, it's okay, but I'm just mentioning that. Um, so having said that, if you would um, just show us the um, third quarter council meeting schedule, Grace, that would be great to share, to screen share. If you can't see it, I have it up on my screen as a screen share. No, we see, can you hit the hit the, um, the Word document? We, we see that, you're, um, that it's highlighted, the third quarter council meeting schedule is highlighted. You want to just uh, let yeah. me try it again. Hold on a okay. second. Yep. We all got it, right? Yeah, we, we did. We got it. Can you see? No. Yeah, something's wrong. I don't. I'm sorry. I don't. It's not coming up as a Word document. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's all, it's all in the packet. So um, we ask that you do take a look at it. And there are going to be, um, there's gonna be three meetings before that. And, um, and I have uh, asked the city clerk's office to book those three meetings. It's um, Grace, do you, because you have that in front of you. I, I actually have it in front of you, um, in front of me. Um, but um, the city council meetings after tonight, include July 11th, mm -hmm. July 25th, August 8th, and August 22nd, okay? Um, July 11th would be just like this. And I am going to recommend to the council that um, the conference room at the Harbor Master's office is available on the 25th of July and also on the 22nd of August. Um, and so we have 
we have booked those dates in the Harbor Master's Office so the council can meet as a whole, um, which would be great. It's kind of like what we did at um, the library last year. And then on the 8th of August, we would be, we would do true remote unless we can get a location um, where we can all be together. And that way, at least our council is together and, um, and working in a room and, um, and then any members of the public that wish to um, zoom in, or if a member of the council has to call in because of travel, um, they will be able to do that. So I just wanted to, um, to share that with you. And if anyone has an objection, um, you can certainly um, talk to me. We have a little time to plan this through. I don't think we have to go into it in detail, but I just think we need to show the city that we are um, together in this and that we wanna be back as a real body in person. And the best we can do right now with people there in the room is uh, September 12th. Any, any questions on this? Seeing none, um, next order of business, Madam Clerk. Uh, an update from Councillor Grow on the Human Rights Commission. Councillor Grow, the floor is yours and you are muted. Um, there I am. Um, we met last uh, last night, Monday night, and the items that I think are of mo most interest uh, to the council would be that there are continue to be um, uh, some adjustments to the uh, the ordinance uh, governing the Human Rights Commission and Disability Rights Commission, and those are expected to come back through legal and then arrive uh, on the mayor's desk for recommendation to the council to uh, amend or to to adopt. Uh, so hopefully those will be um, coming forward in the next couple of weeks. One of the big changes, of course, is the addition of um, students to the HRC uh, to get their perspectives uh, as ex officio members, which I think is, uh, is an exciting change. Uh, we had a great presentation um, by Deputy Director of Citizens for Juvenile Justice, Sana Fidel, and she was presenting on the campaign to raise the minimum age of incarceration. Let me try that again in English campaign to raise the minimum age of incarceration. Um, she sent me a, um, a PDF uh, PowerPoint presentation that I'm going to forward off to everybody so you can reach it. The, the basic gist of this is that um, research is showing that that by raise, raising the age of incarceration so that, that children or, or young adults at age 18 to 20 that are not put through the adult system, but instead remain in the juvenile system, have lower rates of recidivism, which ultimately re results in uh, a better return into uh, the community, uh, much uh, improved savings on the cost of incarceration and the cost of uh, putting them into the system. Uh, and it's designed to um, uh, intervene into what's called the, uh, the school, to, school to prison pipeline or the welfare to prison pipeline. What they find is that, especially in minority communities, that there's a there's a disparity in in how uh, those particular communities are treated, and that if you put kids into the system uh, with the with the uh, with the anticipation that they're going to go into the adult system, they're far less likely to respond to uh, uh, social changes and 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 counseling and ways to get out of the uh, out of that pipeline. Um, I'm going to send this to you. The reason they brought it to us was that um, there is a House and Senate bill uh, that is going to be considered, and I think that they're asking for the mayor's uh, uh, support on this. And I'm I'm hoping that actually that we would consider uh, once you, once it's been supported to to the council as a whole, we might consider supporting this as well. Um, it was a great presentation, and uh, she has uh, shown some interest in in coming back and and presenting to the, the full city council if we so desire it. And um, that is pretty much it. There's a couple of other smaller things. Uh, one of them is the uh, well, Wellspring has put a request in to support the naming of the corner of Magnolia Avenue and Essex Avenue to honor the Freeman family. And the Freeman family, if you don't know, is is one of the first freed uh, African-American families in Gloucester. Uh, they, they lived in the building that is Wellspring and uh, it was pointed out that there are no streets or, or squares named after any African-American families or people in Gloucester. Uh, and this would be something that Wellspring has requested to us, uh, not us, but the mayor to respond to send to us uh, to do. Um, that's it for the, for the most uh, part. There's a couple other issues that are um, 
coming along, but nothing uh, nothing that needs to be talked about now. Great, thank you, Councillor. Oh, also, I should say that we had uh, Burnett, uh, Bernadette Miranda was her first meeting of the uh, the Human Rights Commission, and there are positions that are still open, so they're looking for a few more seats to fill. So if people are interested in in, uh, in joining, they should uh, they should reach out to the mayor's office. That's it. Great, thank, thank you. you so much for that report. We're going to try to get back to doing um, some updates, councilors. <coughs> so if you have um, um, a subcommittee um, that you're <coughs> a representative on. Uh, a volunteer board, um, let me know if you um, like to be next on the agenda. <coughs> I'm sorry, we have a tickle in my throat. Um, so um, next order of business, Madam Clark. Um, the city council statement regarding the Gloucester 400th celebration. Council Gross, the drum roll is on. I messed up with, this, with the pronunciation of some of these tribes, but it's your turn this week. <laughs> 2023 marks 400 years since the English Dorchester Company landed on our shores. Gloucester sits on the ancestral homeland of the Pawtucket people and their neighbors, the Massachusetts, Nipmuc, Penacook, and Wampanoag tribes. Please enjoy the year-long and multiple events throughout 2023, most of which will be free or low cost. This Gloucester MA400.org or a list of upcoming events. Like and share the Gloucester 400 Facebook page. To receive major event notifications by mail, send a request to info at Gloucester MA400.org. Thank you, Councilor Gross. It's appreciated. Next order of business, Madam Clerk. Councilor's request to the mayor. Council Gross. I'm all set. Look, I'm all set. Council, Council Grow. Yeah, I, I hadn't thought about this until just now, but um, the recent uh, uh, work on, on Mount Pleasant and, and adjacent streets with by, by National Grid with the gas replacement has sort of um, uh, highlighted that the communication with National Grid in terms of when and where they're going to be working and, and what uh, roads are going to be closing and what 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 butters are going to be inconveniencing has been um, a little on the shy side. And I think that we need, uh, I would like the mayor's office in in conjunction with DPW and, and the city council to have a conversation with uh, National Grid Gas. Uh, we, we have a poll petition process for National Grid Electric. There's a public hearing process. There's There's all sorts of notification and there's pretty much zero on National Grid Gas side. Uh, and the, the problem, of course, is that they're, they're it, as opposed to the National Grid um, Electric, which is installing a pole and running wires. These guys are actually digging up the roads and, and you know, essentially blocking people out of their out of their houses or in their houses. So I, I, I would ask the mayor's office to coordinate, a, 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 I guess, a, a summit of sorts so that we don't have to initiate too many onerous ordinances to fix this problem. Thank you, Councillor. Um, Councillor Majota. Um, no um, emails or requests to the mayors. I just want to thank the um, St. Peter's Fiesta Committee and all the um, those who were involved for making the fiesta possible, and to the um, police, fire, and all the um, staff to ensure everyone was safe. So thank you to all. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, I'm I'm good with the mayor. Although I would like to uh, piggyback on Councilor. Uh, Grow's request for uh, updated communications regarding the national grid gas work on Mount Pleasant and associated streets. We've been assured by the DPW that they wound up their, um, their water line work by and large, and then they turn it over to the, the gas work, as Jason said, and that's anticipated to run for, as I understand it, at least another two or three or four months. And uh, again, the communications could stand for room for improvement. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Nolan. Um, no request to the mayor, but I want to piggyback on Council Majota um, on the Fiesta Committee, the police and the fire. But I also want to add the DPW uh, for coming in early on those days and working. 
um, to get the place cleaned up. That was a great example of how the city works together with all departments. And also with the upcoming 4th of July, or more 3rd of July for us, the F Gloucester Fireworks Fund and the Horrible's Parade are still underfunded. And if anybody had a, a little extra that they could kick in, you can go through, um, I believe it's the, the Gloucester Fund, care of Cape Ann Savings Bank, um, and donate some money. It's a great effort from a lot of people working really hard to try to show our pride and support in the city for our annual 3rd slash 4th of July. And other than that, thank you all. Thank you, Councilor, Councilor O'Hara. Oh, one other thing, sorry. Oh, go ahead. I, one thing. I, I do want to thank Council Worthley um, for coming out last night and taking notes at my meeting for Private Road Benement on Ocean Highland. Um, it was short notice, but I do appreciate your hard work. Thank you. You're welcome. Good job. <clears throat> Council O'Hara. Thank you. I just want to ask the, the mayor if he could step up the replacement repair of the hydrant uh, the service. Uh, it was as of yesterday at the um, Concord Street at White Mountain Becca Circle. Um, that services um, Becca Circle, uh, White Mountain Road with a 1700 foot stretch. Um, the additional 500 feet is just taxing um, the fire department. It also would be a huge asset, uh, God forbid, if, as has been brought up in the past city council or communications, if there's a fire on Rust Island, particularly at the marina, uh, there is no fire protection. It's a one mile stretch, which is doable, five inch. That's an additional thousand gallons on a fire scene. That hydrant I reported to the mayor on um, May 25th. Uh, obviously today's June 27th. It is still not in service. I, I think that's a huge safety issue that we can't allow to continue. Also the archives office, um, we have visitors um, in our city they're looking for information. I know the folks on Haskell Court are looking for information, but they can't access the archives office. So trying to open that up someplace, I think is critical to the, um, the citizens and visitors of our city. Thank you very much. Also, one other thing, I was reluctant to thank Councilor Worthley. A number of weeks ago, he mentioned the Beach and Traffic Ad Hoc Committee that um, I chaired, uh, we, we presented to the past administration a report, one of which the present administration in, introduced, that's the reservations, which at Good Harbor and Wingersheek, that has been a screaming success. And I wanna thank Council Wordley for bringing that forward. He and many other citizens um, worked very hard on the uh, traffic and beach ad hoc committee. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor O'Neill. I'm all set at this moment. Thank you. Okay. Um, Councillor Worthley. Yes. Uh, thank you, Jamie, for mentioning that role I played in that. It was a fun committee to be part of, and it's good to see results. Um, I echo Councillor Margiotta's uh, praise for the Fiesta Committee. It was a very successful event, and um, it's a hard event, so I got to give him a lot of credit. And the same as Councillor Nolan said, all the city departments. Uh, I want to give um, Grace Poria, uh, kudos for challenging us to have a very efficient meeting. I think we all rose to the challenge. Council Gilman, this is one of our best meetings, I think, yet. And I feel like even though there are sometimes some, ten uh, some issues that create some tension, that's part of the process, and we've all been very respectful. So thank you, Grace, for challenging us and for everybody rising to that challenge. Um, this isn't just a short meeting, it's a very, in fact, we got a lot done. So um, thank you. And um, I'm gonna. I'm trying to figure out how to organize another uh, cleanup event like I did last year with Council O'Neill. Um, I think in every measure it was a success. Just trying to figure out dates. I'll get everyone uh, the information on that as soon as I figure that all out. But um, that's it. I've I've emailed my requests to the mayor already. So thank you. 
Um, so I'm the last one, and um, Grace, I'm, I'm just wondering what the prize is for all of us now that we seem like we're going to adjourn before nine o'clock. So uh, we'll have we'll have to think about some little fun fun surprise for everybody. You and I. Can work well, on you that. did a good job. Challenge has been met. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah, exactly. Um, the only thing that I have to mention is it is important, even though I um, put the request in, um, you know, I am passionately requesting of administration to purchase several additional um, <clears throat> speed limit electronic signs that both collect the data and can be moved at different locations. One is not enough for this whole city with 21 miles and we're all sharing it. And I know um, the, the stuff that, you know, we even want in Ward 4 right now, we wanted it to be, again, placed on Wheeler Street. We still have Walnut Street and Corliss Ave in front of it, just in Ward 4 alone. So I have no idea how many of the rest of you are trying to compete for that, but we need more than one. I brought it up at budgets this year, and they suggested that we look for supplementary funds um, and put this in. So that's what my request is. And, and I hope that um, the mayor's office will take a look at this and consider it. It's like extra feet on the street. It's really important. So um, having said that. Um, yeah, sorry. I did forget one thing. I apologize. Okay. If I may. Um, Councilor Nolan's meeting last night in Mag at the Magnolia Library. I He invited me to join him and I cannot stress, I know how hard being a ward counselor is because I've done that before, but the work that each of you do as ward counselors is nearly impossible. Um, and he successfully led a process over three years to have neighbors in Ocean Highland Ave um, come together to prove a betterment to fix their street themselves through the city. And I got to give him a lot of credit. And I, and I know I do the law often, but I was just impressed how he handled people who were fighting each other at times and fighting the city at times to all come together with a unanimous vote to support fixing their street themselves. And um, great job, Sean. I'm very impressed. Great. Bad boy, That's Sean. Good job. Um, and yeah. Um, so is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Again. Second. By um, Councilor Gross, made by Council Worthley. Roll call vote, Council Gross. Yes. Councilor Gro. Yes. Council Majota. Yes, and good night and happy fourth. Council Memard. Ditto. Good night. Council Nolan. I, Council I feel O'Hara. a thirty-three minute. I feel a thirty-three yeah. minute filibuster coming. Come on, <laughs> let's go. We can do this. We're almost there. Council O'Hara. Yeah. We're we're adjourning. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Council O'Neill. Yes. Council Worthley. Definitely yes. Thank you. Great job. Council Millman. Yes. The yes is have it. The, the meeting is adjourned. Grace, thank you for your creativity. You you helped us move this tonight. So good night, everybody. Good night. Have a great night. Thank you, Grace. You're welcome.